of Rachel Gaffney's Real Ireland and we are coming to you live from the Lincoln Center here in Dallas, Texas. I am finally back in the United States after what seems like a very long um, summer, a great summer, but traveling back and forth to Ireland quite a bit. So nice to be back with you, Anna. Hi. Yes, how are hello. You? And um, remind us how long you were gone for. Oh my gosh, it feels like I have eternity. now completed um, almost eight weeks of research <gasps> in Ireland. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Yes, we've been, I kind of been following along your trips and what, what you've been visiting and you've been researching. It's been really good. So I'm really looking forward to this show. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, and we've been interacting a lot. So it's still pretty hot. I'm looking outside here. It's pretty hot today in Dallas. It is probably a balmy 100 degrees, maybe somewhere thereabouts yep, do you think? I think so yes, yes yeah yes. it's lovely it's really it's, nice it's uh, 38 degrees yeah 38 Ooh. degrees um but anyway we're feels. back here in the studios so um this week I thought I would talk to you guys um about County Kilkenny and uh I was telling you um Anna that you know I've been doing a lot of research and I want to clarify that so we've got the map up on the screen now for you to see again our little trusted map of Ireland and right now we're looking um, at um, just if you look at Dublin and the east coast and then you go down south and uh, move across uh, to County Kilkenny um, can you see County Kilkenny there on the map and this is a county I visited in June um, and I wanted to talk to you about some of the history there and a beautiful property that I discovered. And I say research because, as you know, I arrange trips for people to Ireland all the time. And when they come to me, they want to know where to go. And I sit down and I kind of get a, I chat to them for a while, whether it's over the phone or in person. I want to get a really good feel for who they are and maybe the kind of property that would fit them. Um, just because every, even if you had everybody with the same budget, it, it, it really isn't one size fits all. So this is an, um, a location and a town and a property um, and all of the above that I think people should know about. So let's start straight away with um, Kilkenny. And uh, there's a very famous castle there called Kilkenny Castle. Isn't that beautiful, Anna? It is really cute. Right. Oh my goodness. So this castle, um, you really need to allocate quite a few hours if you're going to visit Kilkenny Castle, but it is well worth it. It's absolutely spectacular. spectacular. And this castle, um, the seat, uh, you know how we have different um, names in Ireland, everybody knows uh, O'Brien and Murphy and O'Sullivan, and we can keep going. But another um, Irish name, uh, another well-known name is the Butler family, spelled B-U-T-L-E-R. And this is a very famous county when it comes to the butler family so we've got the butler family crest up there right now and i want you to have a look in the top right hand corner you can see three goblets um see the red so you got the yellow the red in the crest and you got the three goblets in the top right hand corner and i wonder if anybody knows what this is about where i'm coming from with the goblets the butler and their name Go, go and write something on our comment section because I'm I'm checking for those both on Facebook and YouTube and Twitter. So okay, well, if all the taps. <laughs> and so, if anybody wants to join in and and comment or talk about Kilkenny or the castle or suggestions, please feel free to do to that on YouTube, uh, Twitter, and Facebook Live. But I wanted to tell you there was a gentleman by the name of Theobald Theobald, not Theobald <laughs> the, Theobald Fitzwalter. And he was in Ireland back in 1185. Oh, wow. Yep, with Prince John. And do you know what his job was? Well, I do want to know. Okay, so you don't know, so I'll just tell you. It's not related as the butler. Yeah, 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 we're going to get there. Oh, 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 oh. So his job was he was the chief butler of Ireland. So his name 
was Fitzwalter, his last name or surname, but his job and his title for the king was to be the chief butler of Ireland. And when you were the chief butler of Ireland, you were responsible for providing, obviously, for the royal family food and drink and everything that they needed when they were in Ireland. Okay. Just like any butler would do in a hotel or a country house. The butler mm-hmm. looks after you. So the title was that he was the butler. And one of the things, the titles they had was um, the presage of wine. So that was one of their coveted roles and it was after the king's coronation they he, it was this particular gentleman this butler that would present that very first goblet of wine to uh, the uh, king. Oh. So from there it evolved from just being a butler to the family name becoming butlers. Oh. So that is the origin of the family name butler. Um, in um, and so subsequently you will come across the butler name quite a lot in County Kilkenny uh, namely the um, Kilkenny Castle um, and um, all the connections with Mount Juliet Estate with the Kilkenny Design Centre um, the Kilkenny Design Centre which is fantastic by the way uh, somewhere you got to visit when you're in Kilkenny it features all Irish design whether it's clothing products, furniture, um, you name it, it's just it's a wonderful place to visit, the Kilkenny Design Centre in Kilkenny itself. So just like we have New York, New York, you know, you go visit New York, but it's the state of New York, Kilkenny is actually a town in the county of Kilkenny. Oh, okay, that makes sense. All right. Um, New York, New York, so good they named it twice. Well, Kilkenny, Kilkenny, so, so good they named it <laughs> twice. And Cork, Cork, they named it twice. And we could keep oh. going on with all the places like that. So um, one of the properties I went to visit and stay in was, um, and then, oh, here's Kilkenny Castle. Look at this. And you can see why you need to allocate quite a few hours to enjoy yourself and, you know, really enjoy going around the grounds and, you you know, just taking it all in. You can't do drive-by. You can't kind of go into Kilkenny Castle or Kilkenny and, you know, just be in, in and out in an hour. So that's why I'm always trying to get people to stay put or stay in a region for a few days or, you know, whatever. So I decided to go visit in Thomastown County, Kilkenny, a place, a property uh, which I absolutely love, hands down, love it now. It's called Mount Juliet Estate. Now, this is the back of Mount Juliet Estate. Um, it overlooks the River Nore. So the River Nore runs across or through this property, through this land. And this estate, the Mount Juliet estate, has over one and a half thousand acres. So it's pretty spectacular. It really is. Um, I, I took lots of photographs while I was over there of, you know, when you go inside. OK, that's the restaurant. That's Lady Helen's. And you can see the picture up in the wall from Lady Helen herself and on the menu and everything. And then uh, the beautiful reception lobby area, which is just, you know, very ornate and um, elegant. Now, this is the main manor house. This is the main house. So this is Mount Juliet, the house. So uh, when you go to St. Mount Juliet, you have two options. You can stay in the house or you can stay in the, um, they have a second building, which is, um, oh my gosh, I think it's the Hunter's Yard, it's called. or the Hunter's Lodge, I can't remember which one it's called, but it's a second property. Um, it's, it's a newer property. It's spectacular. It's really beautiful. But they have a very famous golf course there. Are these, um, are the walls, let me put that again on the feed. I beg your pardon? Um, are the walls um, murals? Yes, some of those are murals. Aren't they oh, magnificent? They are so intricate. Now, the house itself was a Georgian manor. Oh. Um, and then when you stay there, um, they, they have... I'll tell you what they're also famous for, besides their golf, is their equestrian. Oh. They have, look at the horse, this is now, I went out for a walk one evening, I went through the woods, and I just want you to know when you hold it there, I told people recently we're going there, when you go, let's say you want to go out on a walk in the evening, um, you're going to allow, I spent two and a half hours probably on my own just walking, because you're going through woods, you're going th- down the driveway, I mean, how could I not stop and look at the foals? Um, and the horses running up on either side of the driveway and not take it all in. Um, I think I took some video footage of the horses as well. Look at them, the mom and baby. Oh, so cute. Aren't they lovely? And you were very close, by the way. There was a fence between us right there, oh, by the way. That's why you felt so confident. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I, Fair enough. And I would never interrupt any animals or, you know, mom and baby or anything. But so you can, um, 
you can book your riding and everything there at Mount Juliet. Um, and then they also have um, fishing, which you guys know uh, from, or those of you who know from listening to me recently, I am now a huge proponent of fly fishing. I love it. Look at that guy. That's Dan O'Neill. Oh, so he, who is this gentleman? Tell us all about So him. Dan O'Neill is the resident... Um, Gilly. It's called a gilly in Ireland. So, in other words, a private uh, fishing guide. Oh, okay. And he took me out in the river, and I, the, the River Nore, N O R E, is the river just that runs through the property there. You can see that. And I really wanted to do some fly fishing with him. And Dan said to me, Look, how open are you to learning, you know, about the actual flies and the fly fishing itself before we get into the fishing? I said, Dan, I'm all yours. I mean, how could you not look at a man like that and, and not say I'm all yours? <laughs> <laughs> But you know, he's a sweet, lovely guy. He's lovely. And, um, but he is so knowledgeable and so passionate about what he does that it was just infectious. So what he taught me all about was the, um, the flies and the sedges and the different stages and the larvae and everything. And the reason that was so important is because um, it helped me with my fishing. What he taught me then made total sense in my fishing. I'm not going to tell everything right now because it's, it's too detailed for people who don't know about fly fishing or who do, and I, won't, I don't want to get it wrong. But it was the most incredible experience. I didn't have my phone, which was great. And um, during that time, I was so focused on then the rhythm of the water and everything. And in this um, river, by the way, there is brown trout. Oh. And it is not catch and release. So if you catch it, you can actually, here's what's so wonderful. If you catch some brown trout at Mount Juliet, if you'd like, they'll cook it for you for dinner that evening and everything. So it's really special. You um, did, did you catch one? I did catch one. Oh, okay. And Dan actually had his phone and he took a little video footage of me fishing. Um, now, have you seen what I mean about this kind of concentration? You're perfect down but I was so focused on, there he is, a little brown trout. I was just so focused on getting that fish and, and getting him in that, you know, and I did catch a few of them, by the way, but I did release them. I didn't, um, I didn't cook with them or anything that night. I would have done, I love trout. Um, but those are brown trout. He, um, he helped me so much that I, all I could do was relax. It was so nice, you're just relaxing. Have you ever done fly fishing, Anna? I have never. Um, let me put myself on the screen here. Um, I have never done it, but you, we've seen you do it a couple of times. There's in your intro video. There's the session here. So I feel like I need to ask you to mentor me into fly fishing. <laughs> well, and I think more and more women should be doing fly fishing. I, I'm sorry, ladies, Sounds but I do. Fun. I mean, I know people are into yoga and goat yoga and all that kind of stuff. But to me, fly fishing is where it's at. Because that is when the brain shuts down. And it, it, it's not even a case of whether you want to or you're trying to. It, it happens because you are between your legs balancing in the water because you don't want the current to take you away. And then you're, you know, concentrating on your wrist and, the, and then the water and the rhythm that uh, your brain has to focus on all those things. Um, but it's not as stressful as other sports, you know, that you're trying to learn all of the... Oh, I just... I know I keep extolling the virtues of it, but... Definitely, I think it's worth a try, and it's a wonderful experience. And you can have a picnic and everything if you want on the bank as well. So, oh, the so, fly fishing was worth it. Okay, wonderful. I want to know another thing. How long were you there for? How long were you in the water? How long was I? Yeah, in the water. Oh, I spent about two and a half hours in there. I'd say. Okay, and tell. And then tell a half us a an hour on the sideline, just doing. Um, you know, chatting and he was showing me this, they're called sedges. It's because before it becomes the fly and the different larvae stages. And he showed me on how they fly around um, the water and where they land and, and what, what they're looking for and how you use that then as a measure to where you cast your fly. And sure enough, when I did what he said, it made catching fish a lot easier. Oh, OK. So he knew what he was talking about. Um, and like I said, he's been there since he was 17 and he does what's known as he makes an, all of his own flies as well, which is very unusual. A lot of these people don't. Oh. So um, I did about, in total, about three hours. I was only going to go out for about an hour and a half and uh, it wasn't enough. So I stayed were, three hours. You were you hooked? I was hooked, yes. I was, <laughs> you're very funny. Um, no, I was hooked and it's definitely worth it. So that's Dan O'Neill. The other gentleman who I love at Mount Juliet is a guy called Des McGrath. 
Now, we call it McGrath. Over here in the States, it's McGrath. M-C-G-R-A-T-H. Mm-hmm. So Des is, um, I would say part of the furniture, is, uh, that's not meant to be an insult, it's a compliment. Des is Customs Relations Manager at Mount Juliet. And, you know, to call him just Customs Relations Manager, I know that's his title, but he's wonderful. He's a gentleman. He's a historian. He's a sweetheart. And I couldn't ask for a nicer person to meet. And so anybody who's going to Mount Juliet, tell Des McGraw, I said hello and I, Rachel sends her love, but he took me around the grounds and he started telling me a lot of the history. And so he loves to share all the stories with you. And boy, are there stories in history. And I won't even go into the little stories about the relationship between the clock and the courtyards and all that kind of stuff. Um, but their gardens are incredible. So one evening, myself and Des went for a walk in the gardens. And there's these beautiful old gates, like old stone gates, the garden gate that you see just before. Oh, there it is. There's a photo of that off the, you know, the property, Mount Juliet. And they grow all their own um, herbs and vegetables, everything through these gardens. And it was evening time. And it went for a walk with Des. And as we were walking through, we were just chatting along the way about different types of herbs and everything. And one of the herbs I wanted to tell you about and... Um, Des explained it to me was we were talking about sage. So I decided to record him telling me because obviously he, they have a lot of interesting guests staying at Mount Juliet as well. And they had had a herbalist from Sweden. And some of these her- herbalists, as you know, are just fascinating. And I'm, I'm very much into that now, the holistic medicine. And um, just because I have suffered from autoimmune diseases myself and in the last two years, changed my lifestyle advised by a doctor and I am off all medications and take nothing and no heart meds nothing so I'm very I have nothing to sell but I I believe in a food being your medicine um, and so he was telling me about the sage so maybe we'll just let him tell us um, himself in his own words one the green leaf okay all that mm-hmm. um, down here sage You have the purple sage. Okay. Mm-hmm. So the purple sage is your ordinary sage. But with the with the the plain green leaf, I'll just show the two of them The plain the plain green sage leaf is ideal for people who are diabetics. Really? Or have high sugar level content in their blood. So we get rid of the purple sage because it's natural. But by using two or three of these leaves a week right two to three leaves wash them chop them up or just tear them apart and put them on your salad it reduces the sugar level in your blood really a herbalist was here from sweden last week and that's how i know isn't that very interesting i loved it yeah i love those little nuggets of information again and i'm going to probably never stop doing this or saying this but unless you stop and take time in the properties um, that you're visiting or these special places like mount juliet estate you can't really treat it like a bed and breakfast um because if you kind of rock up the driveway at seven or eight o'clock at night check into these hotels and then you leave again in the morning after breakfast you've missed a whole world in some of these properties some of these properties are just destinations um ashford castle adair manor dromolan castle park hotel Kenmare, mount juliet estate just to name a few are definitely destination properties okay now i'm sure they don't mind taking your money if you wanted to stay for bed and breakfast i'm just saying that you are robbing yourself of some incredible history and um wonderful experiences so um that was one of the things. And then we wa- when we were walking through the gardens, um, I forget what he called it. I think it's called a Chinese moon or something. It's a big circle. There it is. Look at that lovely circular wall. That is really interesting and in how they got to do it. I know. Like architecture-wise, is, is just fascinating. Uh, somebody might be able to uh, let us know. Um, but it's called, I think it was called a Chinese moon or something to do with the moon. I'm let sorry that I've for forgotten it. now. But... Um, it was just one of those other beautiful attractions um, in uh, Mount Juliet. So you have golf, you have treatment rooms, you have equestrian, 
you have oh, and by the way the golf course is spectacular and the the golf course is what they call a parkland course so it's not a links courses links courses are the ones that are along the coastlines in ireland with the sand dunes the parklands are more of a course that you'd expect here in the united states um it's it's magnificent tiger woods won and uh, one of the american express championships there at mount juliet i mean they've hosted a lot of special tournaments so golf is amazing. and also will i let you guys into a little sneak peek a uh, little secrety thing I am actually working on something for 2020. Notre Dame are playing Navy on August the 29th in Dublin in August 2020, as a lot of people know. And I am putting together a trip that is for Dublin and Kilkenny. Um, I can only take 40 people for zero maximum, um, which will be an allocation of about 20 rooms. And Mount Juliet will be involved in this and some very, very special, um, I can't say what yet, but I have a special guest that will host us at Mount Juliet. I have some special dinners. So that's just something else I'm working on right now for 2020. And I'm also working on a luxury VIP ladies fashion trip. Fashion. What do you mean fashion trip. Uh-huh. Tell me more. So it's going, um, the clue is that it'll be fashion, fashion Irish fashion designer. Um, or designers, a very, very famous florist. Um, it'll have something to do with gardens, castles. It'll be, it'll be very fun. So it'll be culture, fashion, food, but um, that will be for, so those two trips I'm working on are for the fall of 2020. So if you're interested in knowing any details, send me an email or comment on Facebook and I'll add you to that list or database. Um, you know how every week I like to talk about my, you know, or whenever I can, I like to talk my favorite finds and everything. Um, I talked to you guys before about Joe Brown, who I love. And uh, this is, uh, Joe Brown is in Carlo, and I just love her, uh, her skincare range. Well, it started with Joe, it started with her, um, what do they call it, uh, stick perfume. And she was always a lady who wore stick perfume and she couldn't find uh, stick perfumes anywhere. So she decided uh, to start her own. Um, And this one is the floral one. You can't smell it, obviously, but I I can. Take our word for it. It smells amazing. It is lovely. Lemongrass and wild jasmine is this one. She has oriental, I have oriental and um, floral. But this one is, um, look at the packaging. So it's all organic and sustainable and what they call clean beauty. So if somebody had, let's say, eczema or psoriasis or any skin conditions, they can actually use this perfume as well. Um, The packaging is all made out of bamboo. Isn't this lovely? So when you buy the perfume, you just put it in like this and then this is your little gift pack. And it's, it's, it's pretty practical. Also, if you're flying a lot, you want a perfume that won't be a problem when you're carrying your liquids and all the things. Oh, yeah. And this is beeswax. Um, and so all her packaging is sustainable. It's all, it's all um, we use that, throw that word around loosely. But I will say this. I noticed when I was over there, my God, they are streets ahead of us on sustainability. Yes. And um, in Europe, I know people don't like to hear that, but it's just true you know, with plastic bottles. Although I did see yesterday San Francisco have decided that they're going to ban the plastic bottles in the airport. So anyway, I'm not I'm not on the show to talk about that, but I just appreciate people who are doing their bit for the environment, because I think if we all do our bit, it it does go a long way. And I love the fact that we're not going to have all this plastic packaging and everything. This is bamboo. So her face cloths or her wash cloths are bamboo as well, which means they're antimicrobial. So I'll put the link up, but I do have some of these available. It's already there. It's already there. Pardon? I just put the link already. Oh, you're so good. Mind reading. What did I do without you? Um, <laughs> so they, because of her soaps and her facial balms and everything, I have them all in. I'm ordering more from my Christmas pop-up shop. So, oops, did I say that out loud? I'm hosting an Irish Christmas shopping event in November this year. Details oh, to I'm, follow. I love it, especially because in Europe, let me put that myself on the screen. So especially because in Europe, it's so big. People love local markets. And I feel like we definitely love going going to that market to find out all about those products. Yeah, for sure. And I'm just trying to bring Irish products to Dallas as well and um, to the States. So I, on my seven or eight weeks over there, was researching a lot of products and I have product on its way over. And I'm about to place a lot of orders over the next few weeks um, things to do with fashion, beauty, food, um, the home, you name it. So um, watch this space for that. Now, something else I'd like to do is I'd actually love to ask people about what would you guys like to t- me to talk about when it comes to Ireland? I'm looking for your feedback and your suggestions. I have tons of ideas, but 
what I want to know is, is there a particular county you'd like to see featured? Is there a particular property you'd like to know about, whether it's a hotel, whether it's um, something historic that you'd like people to know about? Is there anybody in particular you'd like us to talk about? Now, we're not doing politics in the show, so I'm not talking about this. Is a, this is a respite from politics, OK? But, you know, uh, food, drink, history, culture, um, you name it. Um, just just ask me or a comment or whatever and let us know. Um, share this um, uh, this podcast with other people you know, maybe. That will really yes. help because the more, the more traction we gain, um, the more guests we can have on the show and the more people we can speak to. I mean, I'm flying back again next week to Ireland, believe it or not, on the next, on a direct flight again, which is still going. How was, how was the flight? Tell me all about it. Because I remember we were talking about it. You went, you came back, you already had a kind of like a full experience of the return. And uh, tell us all about the, 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 the direct flight from American Airlines. Oh, right. Yeah. So I'm about to go my fifth one, would you believe it or not? Oh, my gosh. I should have some frequent flyer miles shortly. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm going on August the 29th again with them. But um, American Airlines have that direct flight from Dallas to Dublin. Um, which is fantastic. It was just over eight and a half hours. It goes at 11 o'clock at night. It's on that beautiful new plane, the Dreamliner. So it leaves at 11 p.m., which means at nighttime in the airport, I don't have, you don't have all those crowds. Uh, it's in Terminal D, that lovely new terminal. You get on the plane, it's gorgeous. The lighting is lovely. Um, all of the windows have that tinted naturally. Um, it's just spectacular. It's so efficient. You get in there in the afternoon and then the departing time from Dublin I love because it's in the afternoon which means you're not getting out of your hotel room at five o'clock in the morning or six o'clock in the morning before. You used to have to get up really early to get to Dublin Airport and you don't have to do that anymore. Um, now, I know that that flight started in, on June the 6th was the inaugural flight and it's running through till the end of September. Uh, now, they did tell me before, do you remember when we had Scott in on the show? Yes. Love Scott Siriani and Janet Prince from American Airlines. Um, they were hopeful that, you know, if it performs well and... I don't know if just being full means enough, even though one would think full is enough, but maybe I would imagine profit has a lot to do with it because I don't know, I'm not a, an course. analyst for American Airlines, but do you know what I mean? They did say that if, it, if it's profitable, then they're looking at extending it. So I am sincerely hoping that they will extend it, but I wonder, will I reach out to Scott and ask him for a comment? Yes. Okay, I'll do that I and I'll so. see if I have an answer for us for next week to find out, you know, is there any update on... Rachel Gaffney exclusive? <laughs> Yay, breaking news. <laughs> um, but no, I'd love to know if, how they think it's going or is it just, you know, postponed until next June again. But we'll find out. We'll see what we can do to find out. But in the meantime, um, I'd like to know if you want me to talk to you about anything uh, to do with Ireland, um, maybe some recipes. Maybe we should address some of those coming up for the fall as well. Maybe look at some Christmas recipes and some soups and stuff. But um, until next week, though, I think that's all for now. And I will be here again next week before I hit the road again on August 29th for Ireland. I'm sure we'll probably do one live from over there. But until next week, everybody. Bye, y'all.